As a science fiction author, I often think in terms of mankind's far future and what it might be like, but recently I have been wondering about the future of something else entirely. It is something that is both vital to us, but will also continue to live on long after our time has passed. I have been thinking about the far future of planet Earth. Like ourselves, our planet was doomed the day it was born by the reality of physics and science. Forming about 4.5 billion years ago from the remnants of a long ago supernova, our planet had a fiery beginning. Its hot surface was relentlessly pounded by a bombardment of material left over from the supernova. Comets, asteroids, and even planet-sized objects smacked into the Earth in a sort of cosmic shooting gallery where gravity painted our infant planet with a bullseye. Over time, the available material in the solar system diminished as it struck the planets. This led to a long period of calm where life could form on Earth in peace, albeit still subject to periodic extinction events as leftover material occasionally struck the planet. But Earth would not find a permanent peace as the blue, life-bearing jewel we know and love. Within Earth's future lay its utter destruction, and like the life that once lived upon it, it will someday face death. What might surprise you, though, is how little time life as we know it has left. Due to our presence on Earth, we ourselves have caused what is known as the Great Holocene Extinction as we hunted the mammoths to oblivion and continue to cause the extinction of countless species with our transformation into a technological civilization. But even without that, life on Earth's time was already limited. One specific globe-changing event that lies in the relatively near future is the return of the Ice Ages. We are currently in a warm period known as the Holocene Interglacial Period. Normally, this period could be expected to end about 25,000 years from now, but human activity and modification of the atmosphere could delay that significantly. But long term, the ice must advance. Between 50 and 130,000 years from now, Earth will look much like it did during the last ice age, with great ice sheets covering major portions of the planet in a cycle of glacial advances and retreats. Amid all of this, plate tectonics will march on, and it's now believed that the continents will eventually crash into each other and form new mountain ranges and fault zones, forming a single, huge supercontinent. Another effect that Earth will see is that the length of the day will increase by about an hour and a half over the next 250 million years. This is due to the tidal forces of the Moon slowing the rotation of the Earth. Also during this period, the Moon's distance from Earth will increase. This may cause Earth's axial tilt to change dramatically after about 1.5 billion years, but the most marked possible effect of the interactions between the Earth and the Moon will be Earth tidally locking itself to the Moon. If that happens, which it isn't clear that it will, only one half of the Earth will ever see the Moon, much the same as the Moon only shows us one face because it is already tidally locked with Earth. But the Moon is not Earth's biggest problem. Earth's destiny is forever linked to the Sun. It formed with the Sun, and it will die by the hands of the Sun. Like the god Kronos devouring his children, the Sun will someday change, and where it was once the giver of life and the engine that powered planet Earth, it will also destroy it. But like its birth and evolution into a life-bearing planet, Earth's end will be slow and arduous. While Earth officially has billions of years to live, and the Sun even more, the conditions on this planet will begin to naturally deteriorate in as few as 600 million years as the Sun's luminosity grows as it ages. The effect of this will be staggering. As the solar radiation reaching us increases, we will see a decrease in the levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, despite the current worries over the amounts we have now. This will be due to a higher rate of weathering and silicate minerals that will eventually cause the levels of CO2 to drop below what trees need to photosynthesize. While not all plant life will die and some trees may well adapt, the world as we know it will change and the long-term trend will be for plant life to go extinct. This in turn will cause the extinction of most animal life on Earth. Our Mother Earth will grow very hostile towards us in the end. Going forward in time to about a billion years from now, the sun's luminosity will then be great enough to evaporate the oceans. Earth's water will exist in the atmosphere alone and cause a runaway greenhouse effect. Without the oceans, a surprising effect will occur. Plate tectonics will cease. Water has the effect of lubricating the Earth's tectonic plates, and without it, the plates will grind to a halt, ending continental drift forever, perhaps preserving the shape of the former supercontinent. Following this, due to the Earth's core cooling, we may well see the Earth's magnetic dynamo disappear. This will deprive the Earth of its magnetic fields, causing increased surface radiation and increased loss of volatiles from our atmosphere. If by some miracle life had survived on Earth to reach that point, it could go no further. The illustrious history of life on Earth that ranged from algae to dinosaurs to mankind and whatever else may lie in the future will have come to an end. But when will the Earth finally die? 
The answer is in about 7.5 billion years. By that time, our sun will have run out of hydrogen to fuel its internal fusion reactions and will begin to fuse heavier elements in order to stay alive. This will cause the sun to become a red giant star. The changed sun will begin to slowly swell and redden until it engulfs first Mercury and then Venus. By then, Earth will feel its youth anew as its surface grows glowing hot once more. As it transforms itself, the sun will most probably engulf the Earth entirely. There, the interior of the sun will pound our planet to atoms to be incorporated into the fabric of the sun itself, and all traces of Earth and its life will be obliterated forever. Well, unless the human race becomes a far-flung Type 3 galactic empire, in which case I'm sure we'll find a way to save the Earth. Uncertain factors such as the influence of technology and the potentials of climate engineering could change the equations for Earth significantly. Perhaps someday we will make Earth a sort of museum planet orbiting the new red sun at some safe distance forever preserved by future generations of humans. Or maybe by then we will know how to refuel the sun or otherwise sustain it for billions of years more and give our entire solar system a new lease on life. I hope it's the latter. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channel for in-depth, regular explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.